Hey everyone, today we're going to look at troubleshooting the C28K PLC from Omron. And this is also called a shoebox PLC um, because it actually looks like a shoebox style. And prior to that, we had a C20, which is also a programmer controller, and the K series used all of the um, I.O. from it as well, or could use all of the I.O. And it was called the C20, it was a flat pack. Now, the K-Series has been discontinued since October, or sorry, March of 2002. So it's no longer available. However, we have several of these out in the field right now, and they are, uh, they are going to be failing on you. And there's a couple of uh, manuals associated with the K-Series. The first one here is the operation manual. This will tell you the programming of the, of the unit itself. Then what we have is we have the installation guide. And the installation guide is where we're going to concentrate a little bit on. And we're going to um, uh, look at a couple of troubleshooting of this uh, controller. And we'll, uh, first of all, uh, let's take a look at the actual unit itself. So this is what the K-Series looks like. It's like a shoebox, like I said. And with a ribbon cable, you can connect the additional inputs and outputs. Now there labeled as C20Ps. Um, and then we have um, this flat pack I.O. which is actually a C20 uh, programmable controllers I.O. And connecting them are these ribbon, uh, these little uh, cables, these ribbon cables. So on the actual CPU itself, we actually have the power supply unit. This is the, the K-series, first of all. And we have your power coming in, your outputs, the indicating lights here. You have your expansion. And then we have the uh, 24 volt uh, DC output. We have our, our inputs here. We have this uh, unit right here, this connector. This is a peripheral connector. What it will do is allow us to use the, either the handheld or we, there's another unit that you can actually connect to, the, to your computer. Then we have some high-speed counters. Under here we have the dip switches and the EEPROM socket. Now the memory itself is stored in this unit in a RAM, um, typically a RAM, and these uh, dip switches here will actually select where that memory is. The actual indications on here is we have a power light, we have a run light, and an alarm error light. So we have either fatal or non-fatal alarms. The fatal ones, you'll see the uh, alarm light on solid and a non-fatal, you'll hear you'll see it blinking. Now the blinking light usually means that there's uh, things like a battery. Right? And within this installation guide there's actually a uh, chart here that describes the fatal errors and the non-fatal errors. Both on the main unit as well as on the uh, link or the other uh, link IO units that you add to the system. So if we look at um, the fatal errors, things that you check for is actually the power supply. And remember these things are, are 25 years old or they could be up to 30 years old in the field. And because of that, the first thing or the mean time before failure is rated on your power supply. So that's important to check. Also things like uh, missing end statements will cause a fatal error. And usually that what that happens or how it happens is by changing the battery and taking too long the battery dissipates and you lose your program. When you lose the program parts of that program start missing. When those parts are missing then it will actually cause an error to happen and it will not run anymore. And then your non-fatal error is just when it detects that the battery error is there. Also your scan time um, if it's overrun. But typically if it's been this long, it's not about your program, it's either about losing your, your the memory itself. So that's what we'll uh, concentrate. Now in order to change, uh, there's a th four screws. And you take those screws up using a Phillips. And you'll notice that there's some fuses. There's one fuse for your 24 volt and another fuse for your incoming supply. Those are a good chance that uh, they, they're blown. Hopefully that's it. Change the fuse and you're back up and running. If not, then um, what you'll have to do is 
um, go a little bit further and look at the power supply. You'll see on the flat pack, the C20, uh, the expansion unit, again, four screws, and then you're inside. Now with the relay units, you can always replace the relay units. There's a little relay puller on the, on the right hand side. You can just pull them out and replace them at will. And then batteries. On the lower right hand corner, you'll see a battery with a plug. You pull that plug out and uh, you put the new one in. Now, remember that you have the four screws. They come out. You pull the top cover off. That's where your brains are. There's a, com there's a capacitor keeping the program in there as you do that and you have five minutes to do that within the K-series. Okay. So, the uh, normally when you, if you look at our, our screen here, now I do not have a K-series to show you, however, I do have some equipment that's equivalent. So, if we look at, I'm going to use a CP1M, and currently right now, I have a uh, the power light on and a solid fatal error. And you'll see that that's a, a red light that's showing me that I have a problem with my system right now. So just like the K-Series, um, I'm going to use a what they call a Pro 27 controller, handheld controller. However, you could, uh, on the K-Series, I would plug this module or this connector into the surface and then I can use the Pro 27. There's a one that goes right onto the controller called the Pro 15 and that Pro 15 will allow us to program just like I am right now. So as soon as I call this up I'll plug this in and the first thing it will do is ask me for a password. Now the password is all the same if we hit clear monitor clear and then it comes up and it says uh, in my case here, no end statement, which causes the fatal error. It could say, uh, it could say uh, CPU error, it could say memory error, it could be another number of issues. Again, we go back to the troubleshooting in our manuals and we'll see what's going on. So in our case here, there's no end statement. So what I can do is throw it into program mode and I hit clear. And what you'll see is on the upper uh, left hand turn, corner of the screen there's five zeros. I can now enter, um, I can now scroll down and you can see there's a program in there as I scroll through. Now and I can write all that down as documentation or what I can do is I can go to a particular line number so let's go to address 50 and hit the down arrow key that'll take me directly to that address within the controller. If I hit clear again now we know we don't have an end statement in here so what I'm going to do is on the first address I'm just going to go um, let's see right now I have load 2 so I remember that so if I hit function 01 which is the end statement again everything's located in the manual and I then hit write what write will do is enter that data into the the PLC as well as advance it to the next instruction. So now with that um, into rate I can take my my switch and throw it into monitor mode. When I do that I can look back at the uh, PLCs and sure enough I went from a error before with power and a fatal error on there to now power and a run. So that has cleared my error. So now I know that what's wrong is with my program. Now with the K series, what you'll notice is that there's a few ways of trying to get your program out. And what we can do is go back to our handheld and we can uh, scroll through the program and list everything that we have in order to try to get the program out. Unfortunately, if we don't have a backup, then we're kind of out of luck. Now look around for copies and hopefully there's something that we can use. Yeah, Omron actually provides in their latest software package, there is it's called CX Programmer. There is a, a CX Programmer file converter. And when you go, f and that's part, it's right in the CX programming file. So if you go file, import, and then the type of uh, file you want to import, 
would be either the old syswin, um, either SSS or LSS, ladder support software. Now that'll all depend on if you look at the old files then there'd be a .dat for your data files and that's from the LSS software. So we call that up, it will convert it for you, then you can go back into um, our CX programmer and then uh, modify the addresses of your K-series and then dump it into a modern day controller. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it is, give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information on the internet. Also, if you go over to our website at www.accautomation.ca and register there, we have a few uh, free links to give away. Also, everything that I've talked about right now, including the links to the manuals for both the K-Series and the C20 are located on our website. Thanks for watching.